In this video, I want to introduce the uh, concept of the junction, the junction potential. If we have a uh, uh, two solutions, for example, that are connected to one another, and let's say that one solution is rich in sodium chloride, and then the other solution is just plain old water. We've got sodium ions and chloride ions that are going to diffuse from the high concentration over to the lower concentration. If we take a look at what I've uh, uh, written over in this left-hand side here, the, uh, uh, it's the mobility of some ions. The mobility is in units of meter squared per volt seconds. The units are not important. Uh, at this point, but the uh, just the values are. And if we take a look here at sodium versus chlorine, it looks like chlorine, or the chloride ion, is more mobile than the sodium ion by upwards of, what, maybe 20% or so? <clears throat> so that means that if we take a close-up view of what's in this region right here, what we will find is that the chloride ions are going to move faster than the, uh, than the sodium. And we're going to set up a region where there is a positive charge, because that's where the slower sodium ions are, and a region of negative charge where the, uh, uh, where the chloride ions are. This separation of charge creates a small electric field. And this is called the junction potential. Now, one question might be, uh, why do we care about this? And let's go ahead and draw, draw down here, our, uh, a typical galvanic cell where we would have Two electrodes, what they are aren't, uh, aren't important at this moment, connected with a voltmeter. And remember that we've got this salt bridge right here. So we've got two solutions, solution spilling over a little bit. The junction potential is going to be important right in this region and also right in this region here because the salt bridge, let's say the salt bridge might be KNO3, potassium nitrate, and the uh, uh, one solution here might be copper nitrate. And the solution here may be zinc nitrate. Now, since we have nitrates in, uh, as all of the anions in this particular case, nitrate, the anions are not going to contribute too much to the, uh, to the junction potential, but potassium ions and zinc ions and copper ions will all travel at, uh, with different mobilities. So there will be some charge separation in these areas here, possibly because the zinc ions uh, could travel more slowly than, say, the potassium ions. This potential, this junction potential, is going to show up right here. This potential will also show up right here. So the potential that we think we're measuring, which is just the reactions between this half-cell reaction and this half-cell reaction, will, be, uh, will also have contributions from the junction potentials. And so the value that we measure will have some uncertainty due to the, uh, to the junction potentials. How much uncertainty are we talking about here? Well, if we have, for example, 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid, and that is in, uh, uh, in, in connection to 3.5 molar calcium chloride, then the junction potential in these cases, 
is going to be around 3.1 millivolts. We don't need to know how this number is calculated at this point. If we are measuring the uh, 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 pH and, uh, of, of the solution, and maybe there's a, uh, a junction potential of 3.1 uh, millivolts, say, because of the, uh, the, the internal solution of the, uh, uh, of the pH electrode, it has a pH response of 59 millivolts per pH unit. This 3.1 uh, uh, millivolts is going to result in an error of 0 0.05 pH units, or about 12% of the hydrogen ion concentration. So we do need to be careful or be aware of junction potentials because they can contribute uh, a significant amount of error to the, uh, uh, to the observed measurement. So how can we minimize this error? It's one of the easiest ways to do that is to pay close attention to the ions that we, uh, that we select for the experiment. Notice here how chloride and potassium have very similar mobilities. If we make a salt bridge or if we make a, a cell that contains potassium and, and chloride, then these two ions are, are going to travel at very similar rates and it will minimize the junction potential that would be, uh, uh, that would be produced. Obviously, this is not always the, uh, uh, um, something that we can do, but it is uh, 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 something that needs to be taken into consideration when we are trying to make very high precision measurements. So what, uh, what can we take away from this? Uh, what type of problems could we think of as, uh, um, uh, to assess our knowledge of junction potentials? Well, what if we had one point, a 0 0.1 molar sodium chloride in connection with 0 0.1 molar potassium chloride. Question would be, um, at the interface, um, which side is positive? So if we think about what's going on here, we've got an interface and we've got sodium ions on one side, chloride ions on one side, potassium ions on this side, and also chloride ions on this side. Since we made the same concentration, there's not going to be any propensity for diffusion of the, uh, uh, of the chloride ions. So the chloride ions are not going to play any role in, uh, uh, in solving this problem. But sodium ions are going to want to go this direction, and potassium ions are going to want to go this direction. We can go and take a look and see which one's faster. It looks like potassium ions, because they have a greater mobility, are going to go faster then the sodium ions will. What that means is the potassium side will be depleted of positive charge and since the potassium is going over to this side we would expect to see an excess of positive charge on the uh, on the left hand side here. So when we ask the question which side of this interface is positive we would conclude this side here. Hopefully we would draw circles just a little bit better than I did, but I hope you get the point.